covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. SliceofSciFi.com Hey, welcome everyone to another Slice of Sci-Fi. I'm Michael R. Menengay. I'm Sam Roberts. I'm Ben Raginton. And I'm Megan Zier. Hey, everyone. We're going to do something a little different for you today. It's not going to be a standard episode of Slice of Sci-Fi. What we have is a great guest that we're going to be talking to this show. His name is Mark Hildreth, and he is on a new upcoming, um, well, I think it's when is this airing this is february airing on the february 20 23rd so third. if you're watching this before or after you can set your date accordingly as, as your time travel applies absolutely and he's going to be in a, <laughs> the fate of the end of the world um it's actually called the end of the world i do believe yeah it's a new movie on the sci-fi channel and um it has well we'll let him talk about it yeah, Mark, absolutely mark how you doing today I'm doing, I'm doing great how are you guys fantastic excellent so, um, can you in, can you introduce our listeners to the movie a little bit? <laughs> yeah, sure I can. It's uh, the the movie. Yeah, the movie comes out on February twenty third. It's called End of the World. Um, it's going to be on Sci Fi, and um, it's it's the title is a, a really good description. It's about the end of the world. Um, it, it's sort of a parody of of all those. You know that they, they come out with those disaster movies. You know, there's always oh, yeah. like six or seven or eight of them every year, right? Yeah. And uh, and you know, and some of them are good, and most of them are maybe you know not so good. <laughs> uh, and this one, when I uh, you know, it's funny because when I first heard about it, uh, you know, it was you know it was, a, it was a disaster movie, and I was like, well, I don't know, I don't know. Sometimes those things aren't so good. And then I read it. And it, what End of the World does for disaster movies is kind of like what Scream did for horror movies. <laughs> nice. It's, it's a whole send-up of the whole genre. And we actually, what was very cool about it when I read the script was um, it, it actually in the script there were uh, lines. Where basically, uh, End of the World takes place, um, uh, it's all about uh, these two uh, video store clerks. Uh, played by uh, Neil Grayston and Greg Grunberg. Oh, awesome! And and I play uh, I play Greg Grunberg's uh, cousin. And in the very first scene of the movie, uh, I basically show up at the at the video store and start hitting on Greg's girlfriend, <laughs> which sets up the <laughs> sets up the dramatic tension basically between the characters. And uh, and so anyway, Greg and Neil work in this disaster video movie store, um, and they know all of the disaster movies that have ever been made. And, and in the script, I actually read lines where, you know, there are lines where we're actually making fun of other disaster movies that sci-fi has actually made in the past. Oh, nice. So it, I, I love it, self-reference. It's, real, yeah. it's great. It's real self-referential and very, you know, tongue-in-cheek and, and really, you know, you know, it takes the sauce out of, out of the whole genre. And, and it was really funny when I read it, so I was really excited to do it. Well, now I'm a huge disaster porn fan. I, I I love I love disaster movies and all the destruction and stuff, and watching just basically the world get its butt kicked. Is there any of that stuff happening in there? I mean, how how's the special effects, or have you had a chance to see it? Oh, the the special effects are classically cheesy. Awesome, oh, nice. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. You know, they they design them just so the you know so that it's believable. And, and, you know, there's, yeah, there's a lot of effects and there's a bunch of stunts and, and all that stuff and explosions and all the stuff you expect from a good disaster movie. Um, but, but just kind of cheesy enough, you know, that it really straddles the line between really dangerous and really funny. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> so it's, yeah. We're, we're running from, uh, we're trying to escape, uh, giant plasma balls. That are, that <laughs> That's are a new one, Earth. plasma balls. That's, yeah. I don't know, have we had that uh-huh. one before? No, I'm, yeah. I've not, I've not heard of that. <laughs> that's new. <laughs> Plasma ball. Yeah, so yeah, I, we, uh, that, that's, that's what's going on, and, and we're uh, we're basically being uh, you know being chased by these plasma balls, and then we have to you know come up with a plan of 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 how to escape them, and then there's you know there's all the dramatic tension between between Neil and Greg and, and my character and Caroline Cave, who plays Greg's girlfriend, who's wonderful. And there's a very funny scene where you know we're driving along in our van and. I decide I'm going to hijack the van and go on my own, you know, and I pull a gun on Neil's mom and then Neil, you know, <laughs> starts to, you know, wrestle with me and we get into this classic like three stooges wrestling match, <laughs> you know, which ends with, 
Neil's mom exploding in a ball of plasma. Oh, that's oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Killed mom. That's it sounds that's like excellent. a lot of fun. The fact that they're that you're it, you're throwing a bunch of self-referential and and basically um, uh, going after Siffy because <laughs> let's face it, some of the stuff they've come up with is just wow. Yeah, well, they kn- they know some of their movies are are cheesy and they embrace them for that, which oh, yeah. I really respect. Right. right, that's fantastic. There's a, we have um, uh, Kevin Batchelder, one of our um, contributors and listeners, loves it. You know, mm-hmm. loves those movies and is always calling in reviews. So it's it's nice that they're able to poke fun at themselves yeah. a little bit. I'm actually curious if it's plasma balls. What's the science like in the movie? Like, what's the reasoning behind people turning into plasma? <laughs> yeah. Or, like, like how <laughs> yeah. out of the world is the science in this movie? You know, um, when it, I mean, you learn very quickly as an actor when it comes to things like that, just don't ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> just go with it. Just you know, go with you're it. Like, so, so, so how, you know, how does the plasma actually make your body explode? Well, we don't know. You know, oh, they didn't even try. You know? well, this no. that's that's no different than any of the trashy yeah. disaster films that sci-fi does anyway. Exactly. I mean, there's no real explanation for any of that. So why should we start now? Yeah. It's space plasma. It's beyond the realm of our science. Space you know, plasma. Space plasma. It. That's, that's good. It's like, it's like dilithium crystals. You know, who knows red how matter. Red, red matter. It's red matter. That's it. It's exploding red matter. There we go. We space solved it. Plasma. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So, so we know yeah. um, Greg and Neil, like not personally, but from a lot of other genre properties that we really enjoy, and it seems like they would be super fun to work with. What was that like working with those two? Those two are fantastic. I mean, I've I've known Neil for a while because uh, we worked together on. Uh, he was on a show called Eureka for a long time. Oh, oh I, yeah, we, we know might be on. familiar with. We're huge Eureka fans. You yes. know Eureka, yes, yes, yeah. So uh, I knew uh, a bunch of the guys from that, um, Niall Nader and and Colin Ferguson and, and Neil. And, and so ending up getting to do a movie with Neil was great because uh, Neil is just, he's one of those actors who's just an all around good guy. You know, he's a really good actor, but he's just a really good person and, and just genuine and, 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 a, and a really happy dude. So he's so much fun to work with. Greg, I'd never worked with before. Um, I mean, Greg was fantastic. Greg has, uh, you know, Greg's really experienced. He's done a lot of stuff. He's been in a ton of, of J.J. Abrams yeah. projects, and, you know, mm-hmm. he knows the genre, he knows comedy, uh, and he, uh, you know, he really, um, he really, I think, set the tone, uh, you know, as the lead of the movie, and and the tone he set was was really uh, very off the cuff and very casual, and, and, you know, we did a lot of improv, we did a lot of things you don't usually do, you know, in movies like this, where we were talking over each other a lot, and, and really, uh, um uh, you know, b- bringing as much as, as we could and really adding to the comedy, which which Greg is so great at. He's hilarious. Well, it sounds so, like the, uh, that. Those the, guys are great. Sounds like that. Primarily, you, it's just the three of you on on the screen uh, much of the time. Uh, do you have any uh, any interactions with any other cast? I mean, like I've noticed that uh, one person, one actor that's in this movie that I'm very fascinated with is Brad Dourif. Um, is there any interaction with him, or is this story really just focused on uh, you, Mark, and Neil? It is. Um, it is quite a bit of uh, of the of the, the three of us, the four of us, really. Uh, Caroline Cave, um, uh, you know, plays Greg's girlfriend. It sort of centers around the four of us. But uh, uh, Brad, Brad was fantastic. You know, Brad, Brad plays crazy as good as anybody. Oh my goodness! Yes. Uh, Absolutely, and, and it was so good. You know, and I, I mean, just you know, working with when you work with somebody of that caliber, you know what I mean? Who's who's one floor over the cuckoo's nest? Really, has probably got to be one of the oh. you know top ten movies of all time. Um, and he's, uh, he was, he was, you know, he's just a, he's a, a true pro. So, uh, you know, he plays this sort of crazed, crazed, uh, mad scientist, uh, who, who also ends up unfortunately uh, as a ball of plasma. Um, <laughs> but, uh, we, yeah, we did get a bunch of scenes with him and he was, he was, he was fun to work with. He was, he was a good, he was a good laugh. So tell us a little bit about how you came to this project. I mean, uh, who approached you or did you seek it out? You know, I was um, I was approached by Sci-Fi to to play the role, and uh, like I said, I I didn't, um, you know, I honestly didn't at first. You know, just on first blush, hearing of a you know just a, another disaster movie, I I wasn't you know, it's not, I didn't exactly jump at it. But when I read the script, um, it really was uh, it really was different than anything anything else I'd read. It's sort of like horror, you know, like they make a million horror films every yeah. year, and. Uh, and, and you know, but you imagine reading that that script for Scream and going like, "Wow, this is really different." Uh, you know, it really uh, is very smart and really, uh, 
uh, takes a really interesting perspective on the whole the whole genre and and, uh, and you know I grew up watching you know Monty Python so <laughs> all of that kind of you know self referential yeah. sarcastic you know irony kind of stuff I mean I love that stuff my family's all British so that kind of humor is right up my alley you know? oh yeah so can can we can we veer into your resume a little bit because you've worked on a ton of interesting things. Sure. Um, I yeah. was, uh, I'm a bit of a fan of V. I, it had some up and down qualities, the latest version, but there was a lot of good stuff there. And your character, I found very, very interesting. Um, what was that experience like for you being on that show? Yeah, you know, V was, um, it was, a, I really enjoyed V. You know, I, I got to work with some really great actors on that show. And I'll tell you, it's, it's challenging because, you know, in, in sci-fi, it's like a, it's a special kind of genre because, it's, it, it never seems to be that you get to, you know, like if you're, if you're shooting like a, you know, like a drama, just a normal, you know, family drama, you know, you get to, you know, it's set in a kitchen and you're standing in the kitchen and you can sit at the table and you can hold the glass of milk and yeah. you can like play the scene like it's happening for real, you know, mm-hmm. in sci-fi, you're talking to a tennis ball, you know, in a, in a huge green room that looks like a bathtub. And and you have three actors, and really it's, it's just you and a and a tennis ball and a table. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's got to be you know? <laughs> and, and, and you have to you have to somehow make this into it's a spaceship. <laughs> it, there, <laughs> you, like it's it's, it's all kid. about it's all about your mind's eye, isn't it? I mean, you really have to just kind of have you kind of got to be schizophrenic <laughs> and, and to be able to actually imagine that in, in order to really play to it, don't you? I think you either you have to be schizophrenic or if you just never grew up. Yeah, that's, a that's big, helpful. That's a big that advantage, helps. You know, I, I it's, always, like, yeah, it's like playing make believe. You know. Yeah, I, I always enjoyed with um, V the how the aliens appeared human, but were just slightly off. And there was it, mm-hmm. you guys did a really really job with most of the aliens character having the same kind of just slightly odd quality. Was that difficult to do? Did you have to mimic people who had already done that when you came on the show? Were you given specific direction on that? Was or did it you just know, happen? We we talked about that a little bit in the very beginning. Um you know, what would make them, you know, what would make the aliens, you know, give them that that sort of special quality. And it had to be something subtle. Yeah. Uh, you know, I couldn't be just, uh, you know, let's paint them all green or, you know, give them all tails or something like that. You know, it had to be, they had to be believable, you know? And that was, uh, to me, like, that was probably the most interesting thing about working on V. And the thing that I liked about my character the most is every scene you've got a secret. And, and having a secret is the most fun thing to play as an actor because it's never just what you're saying. It's all about what you're meaning, but you're never really saying what you're meaning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there was this great sort of, you know, you might, you might call it subtext or this mm-hmm. sort of, this sort of undercurrent of like danger and what was really going on, but no one was really talking about. Yeah. And, uh, and that really, I think did a lot of the work for us, you know, working with, um, you know, people like Morris Chestnut, who's mm-hmm. I think is a fantastic actor. And I got to do most of my work with, uh, Marina Backer, who's on Homeland now. Who's, she's amazing. You know, she's, she's, She's studied at Juilliard, and she's the real thing. You know, she really knows what she's doing, and she's a wonderful person to work with. And she's very, she's very skilled. Talk uh, about so you get to play with these subtleties. Yeah, talk about um, talk about a character that's that's playing an alien, being a human, and being just slightly off and. Dem- I mean, wow, she pulled that off. Amazing. I mean, was- there were there were times that she was just absolutely freaking creepy. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> that haircut helped a lot. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, across the board, I think all the yeah. aliens really got that across. And that's what mm-hmm. I was impressed by is because it was very consistent somehow. And it really, really worked for um, giving them that ooh, dread, you know, that they, mm-hmm. yeah. So I really enjoyed Much better you know, than the original. <laughs> there's, little subtle, there's little subtle things that are done by a lot of people that, you know, that not everybody notices. And you wouldn't really know unless you, you were there seeing the process and you were there on set seeing what they do. But... You know, there's very interesting little subtle things that, you know, your DOP will do with the way that he likes you. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's very interesting subtle things that they'll do with you know, certain camera movements and certain angles they'll shoot you at, um, you know, or certain cuts that, that they'll make in editing that add a lot to that tone and add a, they can really uh, change a performance quite significantly. Obviously, you know, it, it really, you know, you take your cues from what the actors are doing, yeah. but it's such a collaborative medium and there's a lot of little subtle things and different people who contribute to that kind of thing that you're seeing that you wouldn't really know unless you were there and you saw, you know, the DOP says, okay, let's, 
come in like at a right angle here and sort of swoop down in front of them when they say that because it's going to give the audience this feeling like we're sort of in on a secret kind of. Yeah. Stuff mm-hmm. like that is like, you know, there's a lot of different really amazing artists working on a on any good set. And, and we had a lot on V, which I think really, it was a real, uh, you know, it takes a village, you know what I mean? Yeah. Something that I'm fascinated with as, as I was reading a bit on your resume is, uh, I mean, you you address two of my biggest nerd areas. One is science fiction, and you've got one heck of a sci-fi resume. The other one is music. I understand that you're quite the musician, and uh, you've got some kind of a deal that you have signed. Could you tell us more about that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, actually, um, mainly with I love music. Music is one of my first loves. I taught myself to play Beethoven when I was 10 years old. I'm impressed. Um, and wow. I, I've, <laughs> and I've always, I've always had a, a, an ear for music and it's just been, I don't know. It's funny that it's, it's hard to describe, but it's one of those things. I, just, I understand it fully. You know, it, it's hard to, you know, it, it's when you have true love, it's, uh, it's hard to even put into words. Are, but, you, doing, um, are you doing anything I, with the music career at this present time? I have, uh, I actually just released my second album, uh, at the beginning of, uh, January called Signs of Life. It's on uh, iTunes and Amazon and, and on my website at markhildreth.com. Um, and it's, uh, I usually describe myself as kind of right in between Elton John and Stevie Wonder. Mm. Uh, oh, that's a nice, like, nice little piano based. area. Yeah, it's like a pop R&B. It's soulful. Um, and uh, I'm really proud of this record. I really love this record and it has a lot to do with uh, love and loss and family. And those are things that I've been really exploring a lot in the last few years I've lost some people and and I've, I've gained some new people and some people have been born you know and <laughs> some people have died and, and it's uh, it's it's really I it's really a privilege to have something like music to, to pour all those experiences into um, but I've uh, I've I've been uh, you know building a music career for for uh, quite a number of years and really doing it independently um, I'm, uh, I'm gonna be playing the house of blues down here in uh, in Hollywood in, in a couple of weeks on the 7th of March. Um, and uh, I've been playing a lot down here. It's a great music scene down here in L.A. I understand you were also uh, at the, what, at the age of eight, you were in Madam Butterfly? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, My very were, first were, job, were, actually, I think. Were you, I was uh, actually five when I was in Madam Butterfly. Uh, let, let me guess, Chocha San's uh, son? <laughs> That's right, yeah, the son of Pinkerton and Butterfly. Yeah, and right. uh, Yeah, I spent, somehow, well, as a five-year-old, you know, I spent two and a half hours a night having a Italian soprano scream at me you know, <laughs> in front of in front of 1200 people I was like this is what I want to do for the rest of my life <laughs> somehow you knew even though that's a non-singing role somehow you knew that this was it that's that impressive for a five year old you know, that was the bug yeah Wow, that is it, it, it's an amazing career, I tell you. It's uh, um, I I'm a I'm a huge music geek myself, so this this uh, I think they kind of go really, hand in hand for yeah, a lot of people. It really is awesome stuff, especially when you're very creative. Do you um do you have any projects or anything you're working on now that you can tell us about? Uh, you know, I have a couple of things that I can't tell you about. Dang it! <laughs> oh, well, I, those are always the best <laughs> kind. <laughs> well, that gives us an excuse have, to have uh, you back on later. So they, yeah, when, exactly. When you can talk exactly. About them. So I can, re- I can reveal all my secrets. I have, um, there's, you know, there's a couple of really big, uh, uh, one in particular, like a really big uh, project that I'm doing, which is, uh, in, which is uh, through voiceover uh, that I'm performing in, um, that I'm, I'm not actually allowed to tell anybody about, or they will, they will, uh, they'll have to kill me. Right. Um, <laughs> but, well, we wouldn't want that. That we, would be bad. We won't no, tell anyone. No, that would be a real downer. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> no, I've got, you know, I'm, I'm. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on with music and, uh, you know, aside from just, um, you know, just playing live, there's, there's always, uh, some new music in the works and, and a new album that's, uh, you know, slowly emerging, uh, you know, to, uh, to be recorded at a future date. And, uh, I'm sort of between projects uh, in terms of acting right now. There's a, there's a few different things going on well, that are on the table uh, down here in LA. I guess the question I have is, I mean, do you, do you have a, a working band that you're working with, or is this just you with the backing? Uh, I mean, uh, it doesn't really have a mention of your band in here. You know, I uh, when I uh, I've been spending a lot of time here in LA, and I've just uh, I've just put together a new band um, that nobody's actually ever heard yet. So uh, they're going to play with me for the first time on uh, on March seventh. Oh um, wow! And 
Yeah, they're fantastic. Um, I've got some of the best players in L.A. As it turns out, I got very lucky uh, to meet uh, uh, a couple of people who are very, very experienced and, uh, you know, play with some amazing people, uh, you know, Billy Ray Cyrus and, uh, and tour, tour all over the world, you know, with the Hanson brothers and some really cool stuff. Um, but uh, I love to play solo also. And sometimes I'll just go into a venue and just take my piano and, you know, and play all by myself. That's one of my favorite things to do. I, I, there's something about, a, you know, just playing with the piano that's real pure and uh, I, I really enjoy it. But I'll start playing with a band down here in, in Hollywood pretty soon. Well, I, I have one question. Uh, obviously, uh, someone with your skill set, both as an actor and as a musician, I mean, it takes a lot of dedication to be able to hone each craft as it is and to make it successful. How do you manage to balance those two? I mean, those are both, yeah. from what I see, full-time jobs, Truly. and yet you're managing to make both of these things work. I find that highly impressive. <laughs> well, you know, I, thank you. And uh, I, I I don't really know. I mean, if you find someone who can tell you, please call me and let me know how to do it. Because... <laughs> It's, I don't, I don't really know how to do that, but you know, it's, it's funny. I, I find myself sometimes, you know, running out of, seemingly running out of time, you know, not having enough time and sort of going, God, I, there's not enough hours in the day. And then, you know, and then I think of like the president and I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, there's other people who do a lot more than I do. Yeah. I have no, and I got the same number of hours that I got, you know? So really I think it's, you know, it's, it's the way you use your time, not so much the time you got, you know? And, and I, uh, I'm very, I'm very lucky that I, that I get the opportunity to do some things that I love. But at the same time, I got to say, I think when you do the things you love, opportunities seem to come up. So it's sort of a co-inspirational relationship in that way. Co-inspirational. I like that. I've never heard <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, uh, I, I'm, I'm looking through your list here so sorry for the pause there but i i, I saw a couple things here. you uh, once uh, put on 20 pounds for a roll <laughs> that's a uh-huh. little pieces of information here that uh, i've got that's dedication to the craft <laughs> absolutely i love shakespeare that's dedication to ice cream and, and burgers i'm saying putting Actually, it on, putting really. it on is maybe not so hard it's the taking getting it off, off. yeah losing <laughs> yeah. that losing that weight yeah. that you take on <laughs> that's right. That's right. I, uh, I actually, you know, it's funny because for me, it's actually the other way around. I, I'm, I'm one of those jerks that everybody loves oh. to hate, but I, uh, Oh, you're I, one of I them. Happen to find it. Um, yeah, I'm one of those people who, who really finds it hard to, to keep weight on. I seem to, I seem to lose weight, but, uh, but I expect that will change very soon because I know it's not like that for my dad. <laughs> yeah, I was like that when I was younger, and then in my mid thirties, it all changed. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you're, you're look fo- something <laughs> yeah. to look forward to. And then the I other have this impending sense of doom. I, oh, there you it's go. It's going to be like I put on twenty pounds for a roll, and it's going to be like, yeah. So does everybody your age? <laughs> exactly. As I look at your website, you really are something of a renaissance man. I mean, you love photography as well. Yeah, I saw that. And talking to people, uh, people talking to each other is what you like to take pictures of. <laughs> I, I found that fascinating. <laughs> Tell yeah, us why. I, I don't care. Uh, you know, I, I hate, go, I never go, you know, you go on vacation and you take those panoramic shots, you know, those beautiful sunsets and everything. I love those sometimes, but I just love, I just love looking at people. I do something about people, you know, and whenever I find, whenever, I don't mean to, I just, whenever I got a camera in my hand, and I always want to photograph the people. And especially when you see people communicating, I think it's just, there's something magical about the fact that we can communicate with each other. I guess it's, it's why I'm a, an actor and an artist and a musician, I, I think. Uh, it probably you know, allows you to see things. Inspire each other. It probably allows uh-huh. you, uh, being that you're an actor and a performer, it allows you to see things in people that maybe the rest of us just don't are we're just not aware of. It's really, I think, what really in its in its highest noble form is really what what acting is is, is a study of people and, and the great actors. You know, I, they they have such a deep understanding of themselves and of people and how human beings work. It's a real humanitarian. Mm-hmm endeavor in its highest form, you know, and, and I, I aspire to that. I, I aspire to be like those, you know, those, those great performers who I think could probably hold their own, any philosopher or any, any, uh, humanitarian, you know, they really have a real sense of, of how people work. Yeah. I, I, I just love I that. that. It inspires me to go in. 
I get that a lot. I get that. I'm 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 a people watcher too. I love to just you know hang out in the mall and just kind of watch people do things. I mean, most right. people are. I mean, that's why the people of Walmart such a popular site. <laughs> That's a little different. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, I guess that's I, a that, different. I don't yeah, know that's, that's a really good comparison. No, that's probably yeah, that's a bad comparison. Way to right go there. from humanitarian, the, you know, the <laughs> pinnacle <laughs> of what all actors want, to the worst people in humanity. <laughs> well, thank you so We're much. So I'm, sorry. I'm here to bring you down. There you go. We're so sorry. <laughs> Well, Mark, you are in a fascinating, fascinating guy, and it has actually been absolutely awesome talking to you today. Um, it's been totally my pleasure. Thank you guys so much for having me on. It's been great to chat with you. You so, bet. Not a problem. So we're going to say again, that's The End of the World on Sci-Fi Channel, February 23rd. Look for it, Mark folks. your calendars. It sounds fun, yes. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, you can uh, also call, send your comments in. You know the numbers. It's 206-339-TREK. That's 206-339-8735. Find us on Facebook. Find us on the Twitters. We're everywhere, folks. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everyone in the studio. And we'll be back with more Slice of Sci-Fi in a few days. Thank you.